Good afternoon. It's November the 5th, 2014, and try, time to wrap this baby up. Uh, we had a pretty good day today, all things considered. Gold and crude were really off the charts. Uh, very, very volatile, both driven by big pieces of news. I don't think the election um, really had all that much of an impact yet. Uh, it could. Uh, we will be subject to uh, news announcements out of the Republican Party uh, as towards policy, as towards debt, uh, spending, etc. cetera. Um, so um, the impact of this election on the markets is yet to come, in my opinion. Uh, we started out this morning wanting to sell a 19 to 21 area. Uh, we had a buy in the um, uh, 12 to 14 and we blew right through that and then 8 to 10 for buy two. Uh, a V top, they ran it up in front of the uh, day session opening. So on a V top basis, you're in the game at um, 17. Uh, the market eventually trades all the way down to uh, 10, 50. Um, the trade that set up, according to all our rules, would have had you short. In the 12 area, the market stopped um, above 10. So that would be a scratch to really a loss of two. Market comes back up. Setback trade right here. You break this bars low. Uh, you're short in the uh, 13 area. And we trade down to below 209, so this is a winner. This is in our buy area. You're long uh, in the um, 11 area. The market trades up to 16. That's plus. Uh, these were the trades right here that we talked through. Uh, they were essentially just scratches. Uh, you could have made some money out of them, but uh, would have been very, very difficult to do. Um, Right up here, uh, a setback trade. Pretty choppy trading today. If you took every trade, it's not the right time to trade. We talked about it. Uh, you're short in the 15, and you know, a scratch minus two. Then right up here, beautiful setup. Uh, you're short in the 17 area. Then we trade down uh, to our. Uh, 2010, 50, 2011 area for a nice winner. So it's pretty choppy trading. Uh, you had two losers, uh, two of them just scratched on, and you had three pretty nice winners. Uh, so the idea this morning was to sell 19s to 21s, buy 12s to 14s, or 8s to 10s. If you executed at the edges, you look pretty smart. And in between, depending on how nimble you were, you could have made money or could have lost money. Um, at the end of the day, if you've taken the trades as prescribed, you should have had a positive account. Okay, looking at the F1 screen on the E-mini, higher low, higher high. On this screen, you're still a buyer. Looking at the F2 screen, um, really when you get on the congestion area, it is leaning P, and if we uh, extend extend them uh, market up, uh, it's going to be pretty easy to take the uh, tail out. So this market is still pointed higher on this one uh, in the congestion area. So the volume is telling you, um, you look at the volume shape here, it's definitely a P. Uh, so we're in the same situation that we were um, this morning. So failure at 19 to 20, this is going to be the third time we're up there. It's You want to make, the, make sure the trade sets up. This is assuming a close here in the 17 area, and then 24, 26. On the uh, buy side, last rotate down stopped at 11, so 10, 12, buy one, and then five to seven for buy two. Lots of news tomorrow, but Friday's non-farm payroll number, where they're looking for 235,000, which would be a supportive number. Uh, should hold tomorrow's market and check if it doesn't break out early. 
Uh, so we have jobless claims, 285. Preliminary productivity, I didn't even really see where that was. Unit labor costs, we'll pick them up. Uh, really doesn't, uh, those two really don't drive the market. So uh, jobless claims tomorrow will be the market's focus. And then it's be down to the feelings of uh, what non-farm payrolls are going to be on Friday. Okay, looking at the note, tomorrow we're probably on hold to Friday's numbers, non-farm payroll number. If that comes in as prog, as forecast, it would be a negative for financials. Uh, on this contract, lower high, lower low, uh, you're a seller. Looking at the F2 screen, uh, it's a P shape, but volume is below. Um, the last day of trading and above the day before that. So uh, we kind of got volume right in the middle, and that kind of leans towards trading range with Friday's, Friday's news. Uh, again, we talked about this uh, 125.24 area. If you wanted a resting buy order down there, it would be um, in the uh, 125, 25, 26 area. So looking at this screen, uh, we're sellers at um, 10 to uh, 14, and then at 19 to 23. Basically, we're in a self failure to take out 10 to 14. And if the E mini is selling, we don't want to be short. But I don't think the E mini is going to sell this afternoon. On the buy side, we'll make it one to five on the idea that we're dealing with a trading range tomorrow with Friday's non-farm payroll number then 25 to 29. Hard to see us getting below the buck overnight with a close at nine, unless we get some help from some news. Say so we're going to make 70 this afternoon. I don't know if we're going to get quite that high, but uh, then back into the high, high fifths tomorrow as the wind shifts to the north. But really a very, very mild uh, fall so far. We've had like a couple of weeks of really colder than normal weather. Most of it's been significantly warmer than normal. Okay, self area you take out 8 to 12. The knob spread did come in today. And then 15 to 19 for sell two. On the 30 year on the buy side, eh, we're six seven. So um, last rotate down stopped at 30. So 29 to 01. That's pretty. That's probably a little too generous. So we'll make it 25 to 29 for buy one. And the idea that E mini is going to hold, and then 17 to 21. May have to pay ones to get. I don't know to get pretty quiet with Friday's news. Okay, gold. Uh, definitely lower off the F1 screen. Uh, the issue is where? Uh, I think we're headed for that 1085, 1100 area before the selling is over. Uh, we have rejected prices really above the 1150 area. We're currently at 45, so uh, 48 to 50 sell one, 53, 55 sell two. On the uh, buy side, uh, we're going to be 39 to 41. And then buy two down to our thirty-five, thirty-seven. 
the Russia is being hurt by the sanctions. Uh, the Russian sanctions are probably why Europe is slipping into a recession so quickly, including Germany. And Germany is their biggest, uh, uh, the biggest exporter from the EU to Russia. So with Russia being cut off from its ability to finance and access to funds, it will make a difference. Uh, they can't borrow. They've got to go on a cash-only basis, and that puts a premium on reserves. Makes it uh, makes it pretty difficult. So the the sanctions are having an effect. Okay, crude oil. Um, I mean, it, it, it's hard to know. I think seventy-five is the target. Uh, just a huge day today, though. I mean, it just when you when you look at this, uh, we've had two four dollar uh, days, and we we traded from a low at seventy six fifty. I think we were at seventy nine forty, almost three dollar range today. Uh, I mean, that, that's just you know, in most contracts, it would you you couldn't even think in those kind of terms. Uh, so the seventy nine fifty area to seventy nine. Uh, 60 is pretty good resistance. So 40 <coughs> to 65 is cell 1. And then cell 2 will be uh, that 80 area, about 80 and a quarter. On the buy side, the last rotate down uh, after lunch stopped at 78.17. We're at 94. Uh, as hard as this thing is sold, I'm going to make it 78, 78 and a quarter probably leave it there tomorrow morning and then 7750 7775 <clears throat> but one headline out of Russia one headline out of the Middle East uh, can move this market a bunch and instantly. Uh, same way with gold, uh, they uh, they just uh, the liquidity isn't there. And when uh, some notable speaks, these markets explode. So you really do not you can't even consider trading these if you've ever moved to stop if you because you didn't want to lose money until uh, you have the uh, discipline. Uh, to not move your stops once you figure it out where you, you no longer want to be in the trade. You can't really trade this. Okay, looking at the F1 screen on the euro, uh, I mean, it's going to really be the European announcement tomorrow. I believe it's at uh, 6.45 or 6.17 Eastern or 7.15 Eastern. I forget which. Um, it might be 7.45 Eastern with uh, the Bank of England at, at 7. The daylight savings, I'm not really sure, but I'll have those in the morning. Uh, if the quantitative easing is left the same, that means they're going to be, and they're ex <clears throat> I got $1.2 trillion worth of bad paper they have to take off of uh, their bank's balance sheets and move it to the taxpayer. Then they're going to be printing more money, and this will be down. But I, I mean, I don't know um, the validity of that germ of the uh, story that was out two days ago, where the European finance ministers have said no to the uh, magnitude of the quantitative easing. So it, it's really tough to say. We're kind of down to the news. But if you were to look at this, I mean, you're looking at a B. We're still looking for places to sell it because long term the ECB wants this market lower. So it's really kind of put in the situation of having to know the news before we can make the call. Um, right now, we've rejected prices below 24.75. Uh, we're at 85. We have a low. So the 60 to 70 area is going to be buy one as the market motors into the announcement. And then our 40 to 50 will be buy two, picking up this point over here. On the sell side, um, 95 to 25.05. And then 15 to 25, and we'll have to see how it plays. So, if you 
have an inkling of what the news is going to be, then you've got the trade. It's just like non-farm payrolls or everything else. And uh, Draghi's the one. When Draghi picks up the, the uh, mic, uh, even though you won't like your fill, buy stopping or sell stopping just outside of the range uh, has proven to be an unbelievably profitable trade um, almost all the time when he picks up the mic. That's all I have for November the 5th. See you bright and early in the morning, 645 Central. Hope you have a great evening. I'm out of here.